if that will come to bear here on Oasis. Doesn't like we are going to be starting off on the University here, as far as I'm aware. It's a little bit of a niche shot into the background. You can see some nice uh, bell curves there, or whatever kind of curve that is. Wouldn't know. Not very good at maths, as Not we all know. Wouldn't know. That, uh, every single time they do a flyby shot like this, I'm always like, hmm, I've never seen this before. I, I always kind of wonder where it is. I'm sure it's like underground somewhere that you normally never go in a normal game. Uh, of our observers definitely have like some ex exploration achievements. <laughs> oh, yeah, they do. Giganti, over on the blue. We have all over on the red. We're going to roll out. Like you said, University is going to be the first map. And it does look like it's going to be the classic GOAT for Team Giganti. Three and three on both sides here, and Midna's going to be facing off against Cloudy, one of the most scary Reinhardts in the game. RCK has managed to call out on his own here as a quick retreat came out from Cloudy. But now Team Giganti, they're going to weigh up the situation, see what's going on here, and then they're going to try and make another engagement before this point is captured by We Have All. They can't allow that three percentage to start accruing here, and there they are on the point before it unlocks. Yeah, Mass is going to uh, dive in with the speed boost. At least taking a lot of damage, although Particle Barrier used on him to receive a little bit of healing as well. But no, not quite. So favourable in that healing matchup, and Shadow's actually going to claim his life for the Team Giganti. Not to be one out on the first team fight, more often than not, even though uh, even we saw against one point, the fight lasted, what, how many minutes? A good 15, it felt like. Tank battle definitely in their favour. This is like a quick reset for 12s here, and LH Cloud, he claims another life way fast, and already up to 90% on the Earth Shatter. Some very smart play there from Team Giganti. They allowed We Have Orc to take a forward position so that they could boot Danid down into a pit on that Brigitte, and he couldn't get out without taking a long path around where he wasn't very effective. So that was like an effective elimination for Team Giganti before they'd even taken anyone out. And now we have Org, they are in a bad position. They've got to try and move forward into a huge amount of armor that Shadish just laid down with the rally. Thus far untouched, everyone's got 100 to play with except for Davin. Ooh, Davin, yeah. I don't think he actually caught any of that rally. I'm not entirely sure. It just burnt off rather quickly. That's a lot of burn and turn there. Midna ends up going down to Shatter as the uh, Earth Shatter from LH Cloud. He does lay a couple of people flat on the ground. And Shadow merging forwards now is going to secure yet another kill. And RCK building up towards that self destruct. And hey, would you look at that? Davin's got 90% on the Graviton Surge. That bigger bang. So famous at Gigante 4. Cast has moved over now on to that Zenyatta, trying to make sure there's a little bit of extra damage available onto LH Cloudy. One of the main things that meant that Midna was having trouble staying in was that after he got Shield Bash, he always got this. Orbed. There's the Graviton Surge, there's RCK launching that mech in, does find two kills. And that to the stat sheet. RCK finds the Midna and Cass. Another quick cleanup for Team Giganti. But we have Orga doing a good job of just saving their roles for the time being. They know they're not going to win out against a combo like that. Way fast there, try to use his bubbles to block the uh, block for self destructive RCK. But what Team Giganti did is they saw that when those bubbles came up, they could just damage through them and cleanse them before that self destruct even went off. So that's exactly what Team Giganti did and guaranteed the two kills. But now we have Orc have some tools to play over their own. Here's the sacking armor from Dana using that rally. They're going to move forward. Wayfast does have the Graviton Surge. Plonks it right in the middle of Team Giganti. However, Transcendence does come out to soak up a lot of that damage. However, Twolves is going to find himself two kills with the instant burst from that self-destruct. Davin going extremely low. Just wants to buy time now. They know they lost the fight after losing two members like that, especially in a 3-3. They do trigger overtime. It is now 99%. However, we have Org and flipped the point over. We have Org did get the flip, but Team Giganti are feeling in a pretty good position right now. They haven't finished out University, but they only need to win one more fight in order to clear this stage of Oasis. They've already got three of their ultimates, but they're likely going to build up towards that mean Graviton self-destruct combo that they're so well known for. We have Orgon going to give them time to do so. There's a sound barrier. Shadow dashes forward with the shield bash. RCK going extremely low, and another barrier will come out from Team Giganti this time. Look how much help is on Ripper. He's basically immortal at this point, and Shadow as well. Goes 600, 700 HP. A transcendence coming out to save the rest of the members that we have all for the time being, as RCK does find the kill onto Midna. Now a shield bash done to end Jofi's life, and Will we have all be able to get another point of ingress here and just push into the point? Cass falling, says no to me. And with Dana jumping on to the emergency Doom Fist and a Graviton Surge lock in the morning place, a bigger bang just for style points. University will go over to Team Giganti, but the series isn't over just yet. Remember, this is control. It's best of three. We have Org did try to take control of that by going for an early engagement on Team Giganti as they flew out of their spawn. And Danid. Shades of Sum 41, he was in too deep and he couldn't keep his head above the water there as he was rounded upon by Team Giganti. And then without that support available, it was a lot more confident on LH Cloudy's side to be able to move forward and battle out with Minda because he wasn't worried about that shield bash that would leave him defenseless and prone to being ganged up upon with a Discord Orb and a huge amount of fire coming through from We Have Org. And I like to talk about it again. Team Giganti's 
act action on decisions here, their ability to follow the in-game shot calling is second to none. And looks like we are going to be sticking with 3-3 three, three here. Not a Moira in sight. Both of these teams straight away are rolling out with Zenyatta. It's going to be a very painful time to be either Midna or Cloudy. Yes, that it is. Flicked with a Discord Orb, take a lot of extra damage from literally everybody on the other team. They're going to dash around to the point again, using that Lucio speed boost, try and get an advantageous position. Minda going extremely low, but Aleish Cloudy is going to be the first one to fall this time. That's something you don't normally see with Cloudy at the helm of Team Giganti. And with way past Ray Charge, can shoot through the mech and even shoot through Davin's shield as well. That will be an easy team kill here, or a team, not a team wipe, not necessarily just yet, but we have all going to be able to win the fight. Very hard charge on Wayfar, as you can see, 70% towards that Graviton, uh, that Graviton Surge already. He's just been farming the mech, that's all you need to do, just get rid of that D.Va out of the fight if you're a uh, desire. Like I said in a preamble to the fight, it's very painful to be a main tank here, and Alex Cloudy really felt the vengeance of we have all. They decided that they were going to Discord Orb him, and then 12 went in super deep, put his body on the line to make sure there was extra damage laid down that paid off. The rally and a speed boost sends we have all blustering forwards. They might be a little bit too flustered here as Minda goes a little bit too deep. Wayfast does have that uh, Graviton Surge, but it's whether he actually wants to use it. RTK looking out for the Eat and for the Voice Line also. Wayfast going low, but again, the armor protecting him for the most part, with Bushada securing the kill onto Danid, and Twelve's going down as well. Doesn't like he wants to save this until the next engagement, as Davin does chase him out and find, eventually find the kill. He was trying to save his energy as well, but Davin wasn't having any of it, making sure that when Wayfast respawns, Going to be at zero energy, going to have to build all of that up again if he wants to get a huge amount of damage himself into that clumped up meat sort of ball that is going to be formed from the Graviton Surge and Wayfast lays it down. But we know that RCK is incredibly adept with that defense matrix eating the most powerful ultimates. And here we see we have all ready to try and come in, but Davin's going to strike first. Davin being very scary around that corner, self-destruct right on top of the Reinhardt's head. Midner even just gets charged into the wall. Davin! going to end up finding that kill and a very good and easy and quick team fight kill for Team Giganti. Davin, I'm not sure he's ever had a Graviton Surge and you can see in there sticking it to the wall and as soon as we have Org did enter that archway, they're all locked up in place. However, we have Org didn't really invest much into that last fight. We do have five ultimates to play with here. It's a Team Giganti's two, Shadow K 2K there using the 3D peek, get the information, relay it to his team and now Cloudy can try and meet them in the field. But it was actually a bamboozle, they can be the other way. Well, Graviton Surge and the Shadow is going to hit down from Edge Cloudy to stop all that damage coming through. Ripper killing mid there and actually a charge onto Yofi. So that's two supports now down with Danid soon following him. Ripper is going to march forward with the Transcendence to back them up. They did pop the Sand Barrier also. They're, so they're just going to clean up the rest of We Have Org. They still control the point 61% to 42. Cloudy's use of the Earth Shadow and defensive mana was second to none. He managed to make sure that Midna couldn't remove him from the ball. Made sure that his shield was there to mitigate the incoming damage from a self-destructive 12. And that means We Have Org invested two of their most valuable valuable ultimates for biggest bang combo and didn't get any kills off of it. Well, now they're going to march in. They do have two support ultimates. Harry, that's something to keep in mind. There is the sound barrier and a transcendence to ask for Team Giganti. A rally up as well coming through from We Have Org, so a lot of stacking health. It's going to be also beautiful as soon as they can uh, take down Team Giganti, but they've still got a lot of armor remaining from Shadow's rally a little earlier on. Minna is going to fall first and a transcendence coming out once again to keep the rest of We Have Org alive. It's not going to stop Danny from going down, though, as Davin is just chewing through the mech of Twalls. He's going to get chased out as well as Yofi. They're in overtime right now. This could be it. It. They are just going to push themselves forward straight out of the map. And Team Giganti are going to take the first in the series. Fantastic tracking there from Davin. Absolutely hunting down the Earth. You can be as fast as you want on those roller skates, but you will not be out Davin's aim on the Zaya. Incredibly impressive play there from Team Giganti. Getting a pretty queen, uh, queen sleep? A clean sweep of Oasis. And uh, they showed that thus far they haven't really been made to show much more than the 3-3. Well, the Queen would be happy with that victory, I'm sure. 2-0 to Team Giganti to start us off with. A royal flush. can be a royal flush. All right, there you go. You got the card game pun in there somewhere. <laughs> we did say uh, earlier on, actually, in the week that this is the chance for these underdog teams to disrupt and uh, maybe upset some of the ones at the top. But this time around, 2-0 and the first map going over to Team Giganti. We're going to jump to a quick break, though. Game number two coming up very soon.
Juggernauts have found one map right now against the Trials team that is in the danger zone. Can they pull it back? That is the question. Control is always the map we talk about and say, you know what? they can find an upset. Being a small best of three and being a map that can suit so many different compositions sometimes works in their favor. But Giganti, people like RCK, what can't they play in all honesty? Well, I don't think there's anything that they can't play, but what we are going to be playing is King's Row, the map choice, of course, of We Have All, who are on the back foot now as we move into hybrid. And King's Row Jaws means quite a few things, but most of all in season two, it means double sniper. Yes, it does. And who's the gem sniper on the side of We Have Org? That diamond in the rough is going to be way fast. I want to see him on the Widowmaker as he does uh, start out on the attack, Giganti on the defense. But he has to deal with Davin. This Davin has been training hard, long hours on the Widowmaker in solo queue in order to make sure that he is the tippity top for season two. Davin's been making a montage. He's been checking it twice as well, making sure that he's on top form on the Widowmaker and he's going to have to be, if he wants to beat out way faster, who's going to have some offensive positioning. Picks are worth more here to the offense than the defense because there's an unequal distance that you have to run back on the defense. You take a lot longer to come back if you're defending the point A of King's Row first compared to if you're attacking it, which means that the pick, of course, has more value because it's more downtime on an enemy hero, more time you could potentially have a 6 3 5 available, and that's why, sh that's why these snipers are so important here. Well, I wanted to uh, really I see we have all flex their muscles a little bit, their DPS guns in map number one, but we just never got to see that. It was 3 3 throughout, but now they're going to be able to do that. We've got Danet. He's going to be on that far if he doesn't choose to change. And obviously, way fast, like we just said, on that Widowmaker, it is going to be a lot down to that tank play on the ground where LH Cloudy and Midda, honestly, have just been... It's been even thus far, really. LH Cloudy just pipping to the post some of the time. His shatter usage is just stupendous, like we know it for. Yeah, if we now moving over to Belusia, we're going to be speeding forward. We have all gear as they move over onto this triple tank and way fast being the solo DPS with the Widowmaker. We'll have to see if he decides to wait in spawn for a little while, like some LA Gladiators kind of strategy, making uh, Cloudy try and turn the shield so he can get a surprise shot off. But for now, Davin has his eyes not on the opposing Widowmaker. Yeah, way fast gave him a little bit of a bamboozle there, holding the right flank as Davin was looking to the left. That will be a Ripper going down as well. The Resurrection does go on to Davin, so we'll see who wins out that Widow Jewel. LH Cloudy, though, is going to find the pin onto Yofi, and they're going to be able to tunnel them into this large health pack room as well now. We have all got priority position over to the point, already secured a tick also. Thank you to the efforts of Wayfast. This attack has been very rapid. He's taken out Davin yet again, and Cast is picking up Master 2. Yeah, Danid is going to find the last kill onto RCK. A very quick and concise point number one here from We Have All. This is exactly what we wanted to see out of the gate. Explosive DPS play. Wayfast already securing himself two kills. He's only got 50% on that Emphasize, but it is a very rapidly charging ultimate. Davin deciding, doesn't want to face him one on one. Let's change the Junkrat. Yeah, speaking of explosive, Junkrat on the field, as you said, and Shadow going to move over now onto the Hanzo. So, but Wayfast isn't out of the woods yet when it comes of these long range jewels, they still got to worry about those arrows coming down. No damage drop off from them, and of course, they will do a one shot if they hit you in the head and you have less than 250 HP. But Team Giganti, they're keen to not give up too much ground for free here, following in after General Cloudy. We're going to meet the payload in the street. General Cloudy and the rest of his lieutenants are going to move forward, although that coalescence not doing Cloudy a whole lot of work. However, Shadow's going to be able to back him up as Minda drops the shield, ends up taking an arrow. However, with the kill onto Ripper and Davin even going down as well, you can see Team Giganti corralled into this small corner. Shadow being very aggressive, leaps around the corner and gets lasered straight in half. And that'll be Dan securing another kill onto LH Cloudy. So it looks like they just want to go for a complete and very fast reset. Well, RCK is going to try and get himself some charge towards that Graviton Surge before he goes and a little bit more time on the cart as well. 97% of the way towards a Graviton Surge. And of course, he is going to potentially get that through a passive charge as well. But Shadow's got to catch up. He's got 37% left to go, but he can accrue that incredibly quickly. We have Org, on the other hand, do have the big combo, the self-destruct, and the Graviton Surge. It's going to rely on Midna to try and charge out that shield, but you know just how effective Cloudy can be with the defensive Earth Shadows. Wow, can they pull a Giganti? I'm not entirely sure. They did let the point go over free. Didn't quite spawn in time. Five minutes and 40 seconds they have now in the time bank. They're going to move it around this corner here. And way fast, they're eliminating Ripper already. They're going to have to commit a res to that if they can actually find it. Although you can see way fast being extremely aggressive, guarding that body. Elish Cloudy is going to go down with Shatter also. So there's no big, hot, uh, big combo there available for Team Giganti. Although I say that, there's the Transcendence coming out to make sure they all kept themselves alive during that one. However, 
Dragons and a Graviton Surge will end the push for We Have All. Stability is expensive, Jaws, and right here you can see it in Team Giganti's Ultimate Bank. They invested for Transcendence, the Valkyrie, the Graviton Surge, and the Dragon Striker. As We Have Orc, they only used for two. They used their Big Bang combo, they used the Graviton Surge, and the Self Destruct. And now I wonder if we are going to see some kind of swaps on the side of Team Giganti to bring in a Diva of their own. We know RCK likes that, but for now, Davin's going to try and waylay the offense with a Riptide. Oh, way fast, couldn't quite make it happen. In fact, it swings right back around. And with NH Cloudy swinging in his face as well, you either get killed by the Reinhardt or you get killed by the Riptire. Joe's the Riptire throughout, and that'll be Team Giganti still marching forward. You can see them holding so far up. They know they have LH Cloudy's Earth Shatter. However, no defensive ultimates just yet. Cloudy being here makes the most of a charge that RCK has, trying to let him lay down those plasma mortars at the effective range so that he can start building up to his next ultimate incredibly quickly. Her Shatter came out from Minda, didn't quite find all of anything. And Aish Cloudy now moving forward, extremely low on that barrier, has to save just a little bit, just in case there is some uh, ingress coming through from We Have Orc. Another Flame Strike, nicely struck Midna, and actually a Storm Arrow, damage boosted also, will end up finishing him off. Shatter's going to find himself on the high ground, spots out the Widowmaker, but Wayfast has already dispatched of NH Cloudy. However, Shatter taking the team on his back once again, finds another two kills. And you can see one of the main disadvantages of We Have Orc's current composition is that they aren't running the Zenyatta. Every time it comes down to Midna versus Cloudy, Midna has to back off early because he's taking 30% more damage from everybody. They don't even have a damage boost to try and put on their DPS to allow more damage to go through onto Cloudy. Meanwhile, Master's up there, damage boosting Shatter. He's doing huge amounts of damage onto a discorded target. Midna just can't stay in the fight. Well, there's the defensive ultimate pot from Master. And Valkyrie's going to keep everybody nice and healthy. Way faster trying to spot out Davin through the, pe through the small cracks in the shields of uh, LH Cloudy and the small gaps that uh, even Wayfast is trying to look for also. However, Danid off to the side now. He can be extremely dangerous with the Dragon on Surge. He's going to have to be rather careful though. That Pit of Doom off to his right is going to be rather deadly. Ripper gets caught up in that Graviton Surge. An equal Graviton Surge comes out from Team Giganti, but is followed up with a Dragon Strike and a couple of Storm Arrows to end the fight once more. Once again, great management there from Team Giganti to use the Counter Graviton Surge there. They made sure that Midland was stuck within it so that he couldn't charge forward and remove the shield which was crucial to making that combo work. I'm sh not sure why We Have Orc haven't changed up yet, and here it is. It looks like they're going over to a 3-3. They want to try and just run against Cloudy and wear him down. But once again, they don't have the Discord Orb, so Midna's going to be taking damage a lot more quickly. Well, maybe the pressure is finally getting to them. We Have Orc in a dangerous position. They are still moving forward with LH Cloudy and Midna going down. No Reinhardt's on the field, and no Resurrection's really available as Maza had to back straight away as RCK took the brunt of Danid Shield. Shadow jumping on from the high ground is trying to destroy all on that payload for a little bit longer. Davins is more than well protected up there by Master, just pocketing him permanently. But now, look how far the cart is moving. Three minutes of the time, Mank already gone leg day. However, LH Cloudy being back, he's going to be able to hold fast, but he's going to have to hold a lot quicker than that because minda has got a shatter. He is going to lay it down, doesn't quite find anything, and those dragons are going to come through from the spawn. That sound barrier keeping everybody alive for the time being. LH Cloudy finally finds death as Minda does pin him to the wall, but Shatter still standing strong on that. Hanzo can't quite get anything though. Everybody's just too clumped up. Normally it's all right for the Hanzo, but he's just going to jump straight into a Paprita. Danid ends his life and finds Davin again. A Graviton Surge to the back only finds Casper. He's just going to be able to dash out with the Fade. One meter now remaining here for We Have Orc. And H Cloud is going to go down once more. And it's just time to stall now for uh, Team Giganti. Desperation for Giganti. They're trading lives for seconds and they're not getting a very good interest rate. Coalescence is going to come out, hopefully, to end the push. RCK tried to jump over to the Genji. He can play everything in the book, but a zero charge Genji with nothing to back him up is going to make sure that round one is completed with three points in the bank for We Have All. It was a respectable defense from the side of Giganti, but We Have All, you cannot deny that they have just managed to complete out King's Row against, as you described them, Juggernauts in Group B. Giganti have looked pretty infallible thus far. They have lost on a hybrid before against Eagle Gaming on Eichenwald. But looks like King's Row, we're going to have to see what Team Giganti bring out. Maybe they can have an attack that's as fast as this, maybe faster, or potentially we have Org using some double snipers or similar kinds of defenses may well be able to try and make their way around Cloudy Shield. It seems right now we have Org definitely focusing most on taking down Cloudy. That's what most teams do focus on doing. I mean, he is incredibly tough to break, that shield especially as well. But as soon as he does fall, it's all on to people like RCK who's on the side to protect the rest of his team. He really is the post that keeps the rest of the sign of Team Giganti just standing strong. But 
We have got some DPS stars in Davin and uh, RCK when he wants to play a little bit of the Farah, a little bit of the Genji as well. But Davin is uh, kind of left out for dry some of the time as well when LX Cloudy does fall. And we have all seem to have identified that. Well, speaking of things that we can identify, I wonder if RCK will be sticking on this arrest. We've seen it multiple times in two games. They come out with this double shield composition, but it's yet to really work out, Jaws. However, looks like they're just having a little bit of fun in spawn to me. I doubt Davin's going to be coming out on that Doomfist, and there RCK is taking his shield for a ride. We have Orc. I want to talk once again about not using the Zenyatta there on that offense. I feel like they did have the speed boost, and they could have got much more use out of that by going onto someone like Ripper and making sure that Zen didn't have a protection to stay alive for long. But instead Instead, they kept using it to run into the front lines and they ran into LH Cloudy. They killed him now and then, but every time Midna was sacrificed for it because he got afflicted with a Discord orb. The Nyasas are very dangerous when it comes to a tank play. You've got to watch out who's Discorded. Juju undiscorded, you know, let your shield down for a little bit, but you, you best believe Rick is reapplying that one. Wayfast, like you mentioned, is going to be on that sniper, but no double sniper for We Have All because they have that junk rat instead. Giganti taking a rather aggressive route. is going to meet We Have Org on the high ground. You can see Master speeding everybody up, making sure they get to the high ground ASAP. They're ready to try and sweep through, but they are going to have to deal with Danid, spamming those grenades down a very short corridor, and they may well take a little bit more damage than they're used to here. It's only 22% right now towards a rip tire, and you could be caught out. Master's going to speed them all forward, and now it's time for We Have Org to get the hell out of Dodge. That was a nice uh, spot there from Davin, spotting that trap that was laid up against that wall. Mini goes extremely low. Iris's main weakness there is if she does get dove past that Shield. She is very, very vulnerable. Davin now trying to chase way fast out of all of everything. He's got 70% charge. However, look at that HP. He doesn't really want to peek. However, he might just have to in a minute. Yofi and Kass are going to go down, so he's not going to receive any healing. And in fact, is going to go down to RTK as he was able to just chase him out. Dinga Ganti, like we have all, a very, very successful first push. They invested time jaws, but they got a good return on their investment here. They're going to have about a five minute time bank to roll this forward. There it is, five minutes and 15 seconds. A little bit of progress towards Ultimates as well. Davin's halfway there, and way faster just had to swap over from the Zarya, or rather from the Widowmaker onto the Zarya. So he's completely refreshed his own ultimate count. Dan is going to try and do something with this, uh, with this Riptire, of course, but we'll have to wonder what will it be able to claim. Of course, Cloudy's going to be, once again, the main target. Unconventional healer set up here, unless you're talking about very early seasons of Overwatch in the Senyata and the Lucio. They're going to be able to get into combat very quickly, but a lot of heals, they do not have that. Danid is going to unleash that Riptide through the window. Can he find anybody? It's going a little bit low right now, but everybody and all that incoming fire and all the shielding as well from Team Giganti makes a short work of it. Team Giganti didn't really have any reliable method to kill that. I'm surprised Danid wasn't a little bit more brave. But Ripper's going to be brave as well, turning the remainder of his team to be the same. Transcendence coming out from We Have Orb to keep their front line alive. That Shatter will hit the ground. However, Ripper isn't going to really do all of anything. He's going to get completely ignored in that entire fight as that coalescence did rain through the entire team. Yofi's going to go down to Shatter and even Davin finding the kill onto uh, Midna. You can see Twelve's buying some extra time on the car. It was all about that meatball of Team Giganti marching forward and just making sure they take out the tanks in the front line first, eventually chunk them down. That coalescence does such a good job as well goes through the shields, and there's nothing Midna can do to try and deflect it. Yeah, Midna and LH Cloudy trading those Earth Shadows, but they traded a shiny Charizard right there for a Water Energy. Didn't get the Pokemon cards that they wanted, and Twelves is the only tool left in the box right now for We Have All to try and force this one forward. They have the Self-Destruct, but nothing to combine it with. Maybe they'll save this until Wayfast has that Graviton. Oh man, look at that grab right in the corner. They didn't stand a chance. Team Giganti, mercy, like, no mercy at all when it comes to using these Graviton Surges. LH Cloudy trying to find a little something else as well. Twelves gets chased right up into the spawn. Has got that Earth Shadow as well. Four minutes and 50 seconds now on the time bank for Team Giganti. LH Cloudy showing the floor who's boss, but we've got to remember this is where Team Giganti solidified their own defense. But they did that by investing four ultimates. We have all don't have such a luxury. They may well be able to come out with that early combo, but it looks like Team Giganti will strike first. There's one part of the combo that self-destruct doesn't find anything oh, but Midna gets Boot by Marsa. See you later in the hole. Danik goes down as well. The bloodthirsty support in Marsa is going to claim himself two kills. And that'll be Team Giganti clearing everybody off the point. Four minutes left here. Like they, we have all. They've got to do something fast, but they've only got a couple of volts to work with. The second it comes up, Shadow has put down the rally. We have all got a couple of volts to work with as well, but they're not going to be very welcome here. Alex Cloudy is being the welcoming crew. Graviton Surge down to the point. There's the Shadow. Does hit the neck. Again. Also, does it get anybody? No, it does not. The Graviton Surge itself does kill off Davin. 
the sound barrier will come down from Massa. That extra charge he got from booping the Rhine will serve his team well. Wayfast is going to go down to a flame strike, and you can see Massa just dancing around the cart, dancing around the members of We Have Orb. They're soon to be eradicated off the point, and you can see in the corner they tried to get a shatter down. It was Midna's only hope. But round two completion on the board for Team Giganti. Three points in their time ba in their bank, and the time bank a little bit greater than we have Orcs. A little bit of uh, choking under pressure there, I think. We saw Wayfast lay down that Graviton Surge that he'd had for about two fights, and I think he only got it onto Davin. Midna charged through, trying to lay down some burst damage, but he managed to, the angle that he took coming out of that door is that he charged Davin off the edge of a map, but he also took himself with that. Like, in theory, that can be a good trade because Midna will come back a lot sooner, but in actuality, it meant there was no one to defend. We have all from Team Giganti's DPS. You could see Cloudy swinging away at from thereafter, freely building up towards Red Earth Shadow. He used to lock down one of the spawn points right towards the end. And the remainder of Team Giganti as well were just... Ripper throwing out orb after orb, getting himself a huge amount of ult charge. We have Orc had no one to defend them, so Midna probably not the greatest charge of his career. To try and save it with a shadow at the end, but unfortunately he ended up just uh, biting the dust himself, just turned into a million pieces. Shattering the dreams. Cloudy was just holding the door, making sure no one can pass him. And you've got to think, especially with, um, with single targets coming out, easy Discord orb, it's uh, extremely, you're extremely vulnerable, obviously, when you're on your own regardless. But Ripper and Master just doing a fantastic job on the support duo. So, some true, true stalwarts when it comes to support play. And you can see why Team Giganti do well, so, do so well with their tank lineups as well. It's because their supports are always at their back. Davin this time will be ready for way fast. I imagine he's going to have to be a little bit more inventive with his methods of pressuring out his co-sniper. Well, way fast, like you said, is going to jump onto the Widowmaker. That's a nice headshot from Davin. In fact, well, very almost caught Dan in his shins on the way out. Ripper is going to go down to a headshot away fast, though. Another very quick fight here coming through from We Have Orb. These first points, seems like no one knows how to defend them in all honesty. The overwhelming pressure coming out from both of these teams is going to secure it. Tinga Ganti falling, however. 45 seconds left in the time bank. Overtime will knock on the door very soon. We Have Orb seem to be very good at taking advantage of a lapse in communication that happened when someone dies on pretty much any team. You do have this sort of moment where you're like, okay, what are we going to do now? Is the fight over because we've lost this person? And when you're weighing that up, Team Giganti are a little bit less decisive. Twelves could go up and get Mars. I remember there was no healing available for Team Giganti. We all had to just feed themselves into the grinder that was for We Have Org Attack. Davin, however, because he was fighting the tanks for quite a while, already has himself the Infrasites, will have an advantage against Wavefast, who's going to have to play behind the Reinhardt shield. Shadow's going to try and take care of that shield from Midna, but not a whole lot of damage coming onto him just yet. However, Twelves is taking a fair bit as to duck back and receive a little bit of healing from Cass, and the Coalescence instantly used as soon as he did get it. Now Davin trying to peek over the edge, trying to find a little something something. However, it will be Shadow picking up the first kill of the fight in Midna. This is the target they wanted when Trolls on the back line trying to do something is just left in no man's land. Dragons will come out to slip the rest of the team, and it might just it there as well. Cass is trying to get away, but that Bionic Rask isn't going to help him kill a lot of anybody. Even Danny, trapped in the bookstore, can't quite get his returns on those books, and uh, he's going to be there for a little while longer. Davin finding the last kill of the game, along with their LH Cloudy picking up Midda. They are going to end the fight after only just one cap from We Have Orc. And once again, the main tank battle as well, that, that was really decided. No Discord or on LH Cloud, he meant that he was a lot more free to swing around than Midna was, who was taking the pressure from the Hanzo as well, who we know is a very effective tank buster, especially when the Discord Orb is involved in that as well. And thankfully, we have all here to have a pretty good win condition. Three minutes and 43 seconds, Team Giganti have to capture the first point and get 54.07 meters on payload progress. But it does look like if, uh, if history repeats itself, Jaws, and we have all cannot hold on the first point because both teams had very expedient attacks but team giganti they're in a commanding position yeah they'll go up a uh, match point in this series do it rck i know you want to play it. every single time he hovers the doom fist it was like, impressive last time it's like he actually wants to play it because it did win them the point on control center against one point so you know maybe bring it out in the clutches of moments but let's have a look at we have orgs line up they're going with that junk right yet again way fast jumping on to the winner maker minna He's going to be holding on that Arissa. Problem is, we saw what happened last time. He just got chased down. Team Giganti too quick to wrap around and make sure that uh, Arissa can't keep that high ground. 
Yeah, a little bit more proactive movement on the side of We Have Org, maybe, to try and make sure Team Giganti can't force them out as easily. But of course, if you do decide to move and you don't have the Lucio, Team Giganti will always catch up to you because they have that 30% speed boost on aggregate. David taking a little bit of extra damage as he comes out, maybe catching a few too many shots and grenades coming out of the dual DPS of We Have Org. The Hulk comes through, but nothing will be gained from that combination. Then has to be careful here, as once again, Team Giganti are going to go for the good old wraparound. Worked once, why won't it work again? Danet setting up the trap, as well as a couple of bombs being thrown out as well. Different bomb position this time, a different Satyrtrides position, I should say. And they are just going to move forward. They are going to destroy the trap as well. 33% acquired for Danet's Riptire. He needs that ASAP. He needs a Riptire right now, but all the shields, the defense matrix, literally everything stopping them right now. You can see LH Cloudy blocking off, blocking off the hill from mid there. They just completely surrounded him, just punished him. Stop it, he's already dead. Danet tried to get a little couple of bombs there, does manage to keep that high ground advantage but the problem is they're just team members falling around them. Midden are now switching up to that Reinhardt to defend this streets phase because once again, Team Giganti rolled the defense. I'm surprised that we have all tried this defense again when Team Giganti seemed to know exactly how to play against it last time. This time, Midden was trying to be, be a bit more proactive, put himself between Team Giganti and for a treating Danid, but he just got surrounded and he couldn't move from where he was placed because of a body blocking from a huge bodies presented by Team Giganti. Well, maybe, that, maybe that's the pressure coming in. Maybe they just didn't want to try another strat because maybe it can work again. Going back to something that's very comfort is quite easy to fall back on when you're in these high pressure situations. Remember, they are in the danger zone. They need to be able to find a win. They are negative four match points right now. Map score right now, a one to two score line. RCK is going to take out Danet. That Riptide is going to have to find at least one kill on his entrance. He's going to spot out that Master. He is going to fall, and that will just supplement their defense just for a little bit. Danet now swapping over to that Doomfist to see if he can just punch some sense into Gigante. Masa cowering, cowering in the doorway. Do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior? You have a Queen of Junker Tower, and LH Cloud is ready to deliver a message in the form of an Earth Shadow here, and Mid is going to be nowhere near. Uh oh, Coalescence starts off the engagement. LH Cloudy moving forward, does find the Earth Shadow, and he finds four people. However, that Transcendence is going to keep them alive for the time being. That's going to be a big grab as well in the back line. I didn't even see where Davin come from, and neither did we have Org. Ripper's going to be there to find a kill onto Cass and RCK, finding yet another two piece with the self destruct. A self destruct coming out from we have Org, but it was all said and done. They still had a minute and 20 seconds to work with. Team Giganti find King's Row and match point in the series. We have Org made it competitive. We went to a second round, but unfortunately, the time bank just favored Team Giganti too much, and there wasn't enough pay progress to put Team Giganti into a sort of equal situation. So they are going to move into the halftime on match point. What is with the defenses today? I just don't know. It's just roll after roll after roll. No one can really hold a point until it comes to like the second to last. And even in that factory phase, it seems very tough for, either, uh, for both the teams. The best defense is a good offense, I guess, Jules. Apparently so. We didn't even get to see Danad pull out that doom fist or at least uh, try to just beat some sense into LH Cloudy. But we got the desk to break down the two games even further. We'll see you guys in a bit.